Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Kalen Nikolov. Um, I'm cloud engineer at uh, PayPal. Um, the topic um, for this presentation is uh, compute waste management for operators, uh, or, or basically how to nicely reclaim what is yours in a private cloud environment. Uh, the agenda for today is um, uh, going to be an introduction um, how to identify and use resources or VMs, how to deal with those uh, uh, unused resources once they're identified, uh, what strategies we have to eliminate that compute waste uh, on the private cloud, and what uh, tools we use at uh, uh, eBay and PayPal. Um, at the end, I'll talk about uh, the Cloud Minion. That's the tool that we use at uh, eBay and PayPal for uh, um, capacity management on the private cloud, uh, and then will be summary. Uh, for the introduction, um, I guess um, the reason most of you are here in this presentation is that you have the same problem as uh, we used to have at eBay and PayPal, and that it's with uh, compute waste and how to deal with the compute waste in the private cloud. And as you know, that it's um, on the private cloud, it's not that easy to um, um, identify and, and delete uh, uh, unused resources as it's in production. Um, you probably heard a lot of um, talks during the su summit about um, how to create, how to deploy things, and actually this uh, presentation is gonna be how to delete things. Um, it, as you know, that's it. Uh, deleting things is uh, easy and quick, so this presentation shouldn't be that long. Um, so when we started, uh, the reason we started looking at uh, compute waste uh, um, in the private cloud is that uh, a couple of years ago we uh, um, deployed a self-service cloud for the DevQA environment, and um, soon after that we started running into uh, capacity issues. Uh, uh, the users uh, uh, started deploying VMs uh, most of the time just to try the, the, this self-service cloud. So we started looking at um, solutions and how to identify those VMs and how to, uh, what to do with those VMs. And, and it's to know that the compute waste, this can be a um, um, very, very, very serious problem for uh, many organizations. It can cost millions of dollars, so it has to be dealt with. Uh, usually there are um, two challenges in capacity reclamation. Uh, the first one is to identify the a news resource uh, that we have in the cloud, in the private clouds. And the second challenge is what to do with those um, unused resources. Um, we're gonna talk about um, how uh, we at eBay and PayPal reduced uh, that compute waste. So I'll give you um, just an idea of the scale at um, the OpenStack deployments uh, at eBay and PayPal. Uh, PayPal, um, at, is running at 100% of OpenStack on the web in um, mid-tier. Uh, most of the dev QA uh, environments in both PayPal and eBay are on OpenStack. Uh, we have um, 8,500 uh, hypervisors, uh, and actually the number is growing every day, but uh, uh, this is the number for now. Um, the number of virtual machines is uh, 70,000 plus. We also have several thousand uh, users uh, in these uh, clouds. And we are spread across uh, 10 availability zones. So what causes um, uh, compute waste? Um, so when we, when we start uh, dealing with that, we found that uh, we have a lot of users who want to try the cloud service, the sales cloud service, so basically they and they log in, they just click create VM, they see that that's a cool thing, and then most of the time they forgot about this VM, they just leave the VM um, running. Um, we also have uh, VMs who were, were left by X employees, um, they also forgot them to be deleted. Uh, we have VMs that um, are created by admins, so simply by um, testing um, the service after failures or after new deployment. Um, we have temporary resources which were initially, um, actually the temporary resources that are created by users just to 
test a thing or two, and then again they forgot to uh, clean those VMs. Um, our planning uh, is when we, for example, we have a, a VMs created by service accounts for a specific project that request more VMs, and then in the end they end up with uh, using less VMs. And um, the last is VMs with errors. That uh, usually when users um, try to create VMs, sometimes they run into issues, create VMs with error state, and those VMs need to be cleaned as well. Sometimes uh, either on the creation or sometimes on, on deletion, uh, the VMs got errored out. So how to identify um, uh, the unused resources on the private cloud? Um, there are basically two ways. Um, the first way is to install um, agents on the, on the VMs itself. There's a third party tools or it can be self, uh, uh, like a private uh, uh, self-written tools that can go on the VMs. However, um, there are, sometimes there are issues um, installing agents on the private cloud. Sometimes we cannot control what needs to go on the, those VMs. Um, the other uh, way is basically to have tools uh, for collecting metrics on the hypervisor itself. Uh, uh, there we can use uh, Celometer, for example, or we can build our own tools um, to collect data and process this data. Um, so what's on the hypervisor, what uh, things can be looked at, what metrics can be collected for uh, identifying those uh, unused resources. So when we started looking at uh, those metrics, we found that there is no ideal metrics that can show you that, uh, okay, this VM is uh, unused or not used. Um, so every, every, of this, every one of these uh, subsystems have uh, some kind of issues. For example, the CPU can be affected by uh, um, either external or internal factors, uh, some, for example, CPU clock or disk I/O, the hypervisor, or sometimes we find, uh, for example, open vSwitch can also affect uh, this and the CPU. Um, and sometimes when the VM is uh, actually idle, you can see that uh, there's high activity on the from the hypervisor perspective. So that's a mismatch. Uh, memory uh, also cannot be trusted. For example, with, uh, a KVM, um, the KVM basically um, keeps the memory once it's allocated. So if the VM was used at one point and then you cannot really tell whether the VM is uh, consuming memory now or not. Um, with disk I.O. there are also issues. You can find a disk I.O. Uh, of a process, but uh, again, that disk I.O. might be uh, affected by, again by external factors. Uh, the network, it's uh, susceptible to uh, network noise. Uh, this is mostly uh, DHCP, NTP, LDAP, external pings. Um, and basically, it depends on the environment. Sometimes we, have, we might have more or less noise. Uh, however, at the end, we decided to use uh, network um, traffic to identify uh, the unused resources. And the reason for that is, uh, uh, we can um, filter out uh, some of the noise uh, by using some uh, statistical uh, measurements. Um, we can also look at, at both uh, uh, egress and ingress uh, traffic uh, um, independently, make, ind make additional uh, determination whether the VM is used or not. Uh, for example, um, if the egress uh, traffic is uh, very high, but the ingress is uh, Zero that means that there's a problem with the VM. For uh, example, the VM is trying to request a DCP, but, uh, uh, but it doesn't get anything back. Um, how to deal with um, unused uh, resources? Uh, so there are basically two ways. Uh, the first one is to use the chargeback, showback uh, method that's uh, basically making the departments um, responsible for their um, usage or just show them the cost of their usage. Um, however, that doesn't work very well. Uh, in large organizations that uh, there are always fights uh, and whether that's the correct usage and things like that. So we decided to um, use another way, uh, which is the smart reclamation, or basically ask nicely um, uh, about the usage of the VM. So what we do is uh, we identify the VM that uh, is used, uh, unused, 
uh, then we notify the user about that uh, his or her VM is unused, and also uh, his or her manager. And if the user doesn't take any action, uh, we delete that VM. I'll go over that uh, a little bit later with the call flow. Um, so we developed um, um, our own tools for um, um, basically identifying and um, managing that and use VMs. Um, the tool that we developed is uh, CloudMean, actually was covered by Trini. Uh, we use that tool for identifying uh, and use VMs and uh, on the self-service cloud. And um, that uh, tool started as a POC, um, just to test it out. Um, it was kind of very quick, uh, uh, like a scripting, but then it grew into a more complicated uh, tool. Um, we started from a, a single availability zone, uh, and then we added multiple uh, availability zones. Um, the resources we claim, but this, the toll are um, exceeding $3 million so far. Um, here's some reclamation statistics that we have from the, that were made uh, by the tool. Um, so when we first activated the tool, uh, the tool identified 42% uh, of all VMs in the private cloud as uh, unused. Um, and actually those were VMs accumulated over a period of uh, two years. Um, and then um, we started uh, notifying the users about um, uh, that their VMs have been uh, identified as unused. And the users uh, uh, decided to keep uh, about 25% of those uh, pool of 42% and the rest of 75% were uh, automatically deleted by uh, the tool. Um, also, no statistics that um, when we gave the user's choice um, to extend the life of the VMs, uh, uh, most of them selected either to never expire or uh, one year, and there's like 30%, 40% of them decided to keep it temporary for one month or three months. Uh, the reclamation flow, um, actually Trini had a better diagram, but I'll try to explain it uh, in this slide. Uh, so when we identify a VM as unused, um, we uh, set expiration date uh, for that VM. We mark it as unused and we set expiration date, which is uh, 14 days from the time of detection. Uh, that means in 14 days, we're gonna shut down the VM. Um, when we mark the VM as unused, we send email to the user uh, to the users that tell me that, okay, this VM has been identified as unused, and the user had a choice to either extend the life to keep the VM, or um, the user can also delete the VM if he wants, or if it, there's no action taken by the user, which is most of the time that we have. Um, uh, the VM uh, will be shut down in 14 days, uh, and uh, we'll keep the VM again uh, seven days in shutdown state, and then we're gonna delete the VM um, so basically we have 21 days the call process. And the user can always, uh, uh, sorry? Yeah, we can talk after the, so, um, so basically we sent email to the user um, and we also sent reminders uh, uh, to the users every, actually two days prior to the shutdown, two days prior to the deletion, and we usually CC the manager during the, in those reminders in case the user is uh, on vacation or uh, just with visibility as well. So if the user takes no action, yeah, we delete the VM. So the user decides to keep them, he can extend the life of the VM. Uh, he can continue, continuously extend the life if he wants. So as, as I mentioned before, there's no ideal uh, metrics. So um, we basically dis we basically we have decided to uh, ask the users to make the final determination uh, where to keep their VMs. Um, the user feedback that we received, we at the beginning we expected a lot of users to complain, uh, but surprisingly we received very uh, few complaints. Actually, there were not really complaints, but there were more. Uh, that uh, users didn't read their emails or uh, some of them hate receiving notifications, they want to block those notifications. 
um, or they were asking just why my VM is identified as unused. Um, and the reason why the users didn't complain is because we gave them a choice um, to make the final decision whether to keep the VM or not. Um, and that's uh, basically what helped in the whole process. So the cloud minion, um, so the cloud minion smashing starts with POC. Um, um, it's basically uh, a, become a set of tools for identifying um, and use VMs. And then it um, can set expiration dates uh, for the VMs. Uh, it can also delete uh, um, or shut down the VMs. Uh, it can send reminders to the users not notifications. It can generate reports uh, um, for um, all how many VMs could be identified as in use and a bunch of other reports. Uh, it also provides uh, UI uh, for, um, for the users where the users can uh, manage their expiration, um, the expiration dates of, the, of their VMs. Um, they can also um, actually delete uh, the VMs from that UI, uh, which uh, I, we think it, uh, uh, it helped also a lot uh, because uh, um, when the user goes to that web UI, he sees or he sees that, uh, that uh, all of uh, all the VMs of the user, and uh, which the user usually have forgotten about those VMs, so they have a choice to delete uh, the ones that they don't need. Um, the cloud media components here, that the the tools that were. Um, um, so the, on the client side, uh, on the hypervisor, we have um, uh, several tools that uh, are used mostly for identifying whether the VM is used or not. Um, there's a CM, uh, CA, which is a, a cloud medium system activity uh, tool which collects the data from uh, different uh, resources, for example, net, net for network, uh, CPU, et cetera. And, gen and basically um, the same way as uh, Sysstat CA writes a data to a file. Uh, another tool is the uh, CM uh, SAR, which uh, basically re reads that data and makes the determination whether the VM is unused based on uh, uh, predefined rules. I'll, I'll go over the rules later. Um, we also use that uh, same CSR to uh, generate report about the network uh, uh, usage of each VM. So we send that data to another uh, database that we can process and see uh, all the VMs that, uh, for example, can filter out all the VMs that uh, have uh, very high network utilization. Um, on the server side, um, the cloud media server side, we have a, um, it, it starts a temporary um, um, API, cloud media API service. Uh, it was kind of very quick and dirty, uh, which is using CGI, pro CGI. Uh, with the intention to replace it with uh, something more robust. Um, the Cloud uh, Minion Manager, this is the main part that uh, is processing all the data and uh, which basically what it's doing is uh, syncs data from uh, OpenStack database uh, with um, uh, the Cloud Minion database. It sets expiration dates, it sends notifications and shuts downs and deletes the VMs. And uh, VM, Exploration management tool, which is um, where the users uh, uh, can see all their VMs, they can manage the, their VMs, they, they can change the expiration date of the VMs, or, can, or they can just delete the VMs from there. Uh, here's the block diagram. Um, as I mentioned, on the hypervisor, we have the CM agent, which uh, talks to the API service, uh, and then the, basically sends the data to API service uh, with information about all VMs, uh, whether it's used or not, and then the API is writing to the Cloud Media database. Uh, then the Cloud Media Manager, the, the manager syncs data from OpenStack database to the uh, Cloud Media database. There are a bunch of other smaller tools, for example, the emailer that sends notifications to the user. There's not the tool that, uh, it's not here, but it's, we use it, uh, it's LDAP uh, query. Manager basically gets the real uh, email address from LDAP, uh, basically the username. And um, VM exploration manager, it also talks to the APA and um, it can also be used to shut down and delete VMs. 
Uh, here are some of the rules um, we um, used for identifying and used resources. Uh, as, as I mentioned, we use um, network uh, traffic uh, uh, primarily for identifying the uh, new resources. And we use network traffic in, in all rules. However, um, in the rules, uh, we can easily add um, other subsystems like CPU or disk I.O. Um, so the rules that we currently use are um, if the network traffic stays below um, X megabytes, it's usually it depends on the environment and some environments we have um, uh, less or some we have more, depends on the noise. Uh, usually it's set to four megabytes or even, sometimes even less. So the network traffic stays below X megabytes for uh, 14 consecutive days or the standard deviation um, network traffic is less than uh, X amount of, usually it's uh, 1K, actually 100K uh, bytes. Or if the ingress traffic is um, zero bytes, then the VM is uh, uh, marked as unused. And uh, once again, this uh, basically we try to with these numbers. Uh, it depends on the environment. Uh, some environments are noisier than others. Uh, these numbers can easily be changed. So the um, cloud minion integration with other tools. Um, for identifying and use resources, uh, we have uh, uh, our own tools, but um, we can easily integrate with uh, other, other tools for uh, extracting metrics. For example, the Cilometer. We had some issues with Cilometer um, in the past. That's why uh, uh, we stopped uh, using it. We're trying again to use it, but uh, uh, we're not ready yet for to switch uh, to collecting data from Cilometer. Uh, so basically anything that can collect data and come and generate uh, reports, it, even uh, sysstat, SASR can be used. Um, Bizarre uh, integration with OpenStack. Um, so when we started this, uh, uh, the project, uh, um, we didn't plan for any integration. And currently there's no um, integration with OpenStack. And uh, um, there are plans to, um, integrate with uh, OpenStack dashboards, and that's gonna be really helpful so users can use one dashboard for uh, everything so they don't have to use uh, separate in UI, uh, which was was supposed to be temporary, but it's still being used. Um, and also integration with native OpenStack telemetry. And almost the entire like to um, Call for help if the community is interested in that tool. Um, uh, Patch that tool is uh, uh, we open source that tool. Uh, if the community is interested, um, um, we'll, we'll be very happy to, to work with the community on rewriting that tool because it, uh, uh, it the time when we started to, uh, writing that tool, um, it was patched multiple times. It's not in very good shape. It works now. That's uh, what we use currently. Uh, it's it's been automated uh, to work, but uh, it's desired to be uh, rewritten. Um, and also, uh, there's a need for integration with OpenStack, uh, uh, especially with uh, the dashboard. Uh, in summary, I can say that um, um, the capacity reclamation um, in a self-service cloud can be uh, challenging. Um, but uh, it can be also reward rewarding um, once you uh, start dealing with your unused resources. As I mentioned, we saved uh, millions of dollars on that. Uh, and the smart reclamation that we started using uh, has proven to be effective for us. Uh, and also the cloud medium tool, uh, it helped us reduce the unused resources that we accumulated and it's continuing to reduce that, uh, notify new resources and clean them. Uh, it's uh, available on um, public GitHub, if you guys are interested. Um, we will be happy to work with you on um, redesigning and uh, rewriting it. And that's pretty much all for the presentation. It's going to be short. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, you can use the microphone. 
when when you're sampling the traffic to do the uh, statistical analysis um, to mark machines for deletion, do you do that at random intervals or at different times every day to detect, like, uh, if so you have a bursty workload? So, so currently we use uh, uh, we get a snapshot of the network traffic uh, once a day. However, we can um, um, basically take a snapshot um, in smaller intervals. We're planning to uh, switch to one hour instead of uh, 24 hour snapshots. Uh, but um, once again, you can take different uh, snapshots at different intervals, and then you can adjust your numbers uh, uh, in the rules, uh, what you want. So that's pretty much uh, up to, to you. But uh, we found that uh, once a day works fine for us. I was wondering uh, if you have some other tools to manage uh, uh, vestigian floating IPs. No, actually, we. Um, once you delete the VM through Nova, basically that, it, that deletion basically cleans the, the floating IP as well. So we have uh, sort of automated the whole process to, once you delete the VM, it deletes also um, a, a pull from LBUS and it deletes also a, a volume that uh, the VM is using. Um, there are also um, additional features that uh, we'd like to implement the tool that if you don't have that integration with, uh, um, about cleaning other resources, with Nova Delete, um, you can, um, we're planning to add those features here that basically can automatically clean uh, okay. other resources as well, but we don't, we don't have uh, this right now. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering about the deprecation period choice. I can understand that you'd want to turn off a VM and see if anyone screams, but why a total of 21 days? Wouldn't it be more useful to do something like 30 days or a quarter, something that corresponds to a business cycle? Uh, it's up to you. For, for us, it, um, we start with uh, 14 days. Um, basically, within 14 days, we shut down the VM, and then we'll wait for another seven days. Um, however, we, um, at some point, we decided to be more aggressive, so even we shortened that period. Oh, so even okay. less. Uh, so it's 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 up to it's up the organization to decide how long uh, you want to keep uh, that VM. And usually, we we have 14 days uh, um, it initially when the VM is uh, detected as unused, which is basically 14 days of inactivity, and then we have 14 days. Yeah, but attention. you 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 know you might have a VM that's only used for. Uh, a batch job that runs once a month, runs a quarter. Exactly. That's, that's why we have that uh, final determination is made by the user. Um, that's why we give the user. Uh, usually, it, um, we try to uh, make things uh, um, as much as better, basically, identify a new resource. But there's no ideal way to identify whether the VM is in use. A user can use it like a once a month and we'll find it. That's why we have uh, the final decision to be made by the user. Okay, the other question is, um, just wondering if, isn't there potential to do reclamation and things like object store in that? And if so, have you actually done just some what if analysis to try figuring out what percentage of your objects may be unused? Um, we were planning, but we actually, we didn't have time to do that, no, but currently no. Currently the tool is, uh, I mentioned it's like a POC, it just, uh, and those VMs and um, most of VMs that we have, and then, but yeah, there are plans to add more features. And once again, if the community is interested, uh, we'll be happy to work. Okay, thanks. I guess just kind of a follow up on that to just see what do we have all the information we need in OpenStack to track if a volume has been mapped or used in the last three months, same for images. So because users love to create lots of images that just take up space and glance and never get used again. Uh, we haven't looked at that, uh, as, as I mentioned, that, um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's possible to um, basically add that feature as well to the tool to handle volumes, yeah. Well, if you don't have any other questions, thank you for the presentation. Okay.